know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is, the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. All of this is the Actors Fund. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Hello, my name is James Renault Iglehart, and welcome to the New Works Virtual Festival, a benefit for the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund is a 501 charitable organization that supports everyone involved in the entertainment industry. So, please make a donation if you can by texting 5678-GIVE to 56512 or go to theactorsfund.org slash NWVFest. We appreciate your support, and now... Sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show. Hi, I'm Peter Kennedy, and someday I'm going to die. And actually, all the characters in my play are going to die. And all the actors playing the characters in the play are going to die. And the producers are going to die. The director's definitely going to die. Um, all the audience will die. And Someday you're going to die too, and that's okay, and we should probably have a conversation about it. Let's have a family game night. Family Game Night, a play by Peter Kennedy. At Rise, the Morton family kitchen evening. It's a rambling old farmhouse kitchen which probably hasn't been remodeled in the past several decades. There's a large wooden table and four wooden chairs that have seen many meals. Two other mismatched chairs probably dragged in from the dining room are also there. Further back, a sink, countertop, and stove are visible underneath a window overlooking the backyard. Kitchen cabinets flank either side of the window. Back door leading outside. Near our coats hanging on the wall and a rubber mat strung with sneakers, boots, etc. And just to the left of that are the first few steps of the staircase leading to the second floor. There's a refrigerator adorned with the usual magnetic driftwood, a family life facing center. A swinging door leads to the dining room. On the other side of the door is a little nook. There's an unseen pendulum clock somewhere in the room and it's ticking and it'll become audible during quieter moments, but it should always be marking off the seconds in the background. Mom, Dad, Max, and Angie are navigating around each other as they prepare snacks and set them on the table. Honey, do we have any more microwave popcorn the one with the movie theater butter? I threw it out in the last purge. It expired September 2014. Dad, that stuff is toxic anyway. It'll give you cancer. Is there anything that doesn't give you cancer? It's the perfluoctanoic acid. It's a nonstick chemical that they line the bags with, and it can leach into your digestive system if it's undergone decomposition. Must you take the joy out of everything? They also use a flavoring agent called diacetyl. It's been known to cause lung disease in microwave popcorn factory workers. You suck the life out of every room that you enter, you know that? Mom, will you tell your idiot son? Grim Reaper soccer mom. Mom! Andrea! Max! I found it! Dad! All right, here's what I never get, okay? A serving size is three tablespoons unpopped, which equals six and a half cups popped. Okay, but then there are, there are two servings in a bag. So th that means that there are 12 and a half. 13. Thir okay, 13 cups in one bag. 
Then it says three tablespoons of unpopped popcorn equals 150 calories. But when you pop the corn, the calories shrink down to 15 calories per cup popped. So um, I don't know, where do the extra calories go? Huh? Do they burn off when you pop the corn? Honey, the calories are still there. They don't just evaporate. Then why, okay, then why are there only 15 calories per cup now? Because three tablespoons unpopped equals six and a half popped cups, not one popped cup. My friends always feel sorry for me when I tell them this is how I spend the last Saturday evening of every, every month. So, okay. So you're telling me when I eat a whole bag, I'm not really just eating 15 calories. No, you're eating 13 cups times 15 calories. Which is? A whole lot. 195 calories. Holy shit. Plus all the carcinogenic acid, a agents. Stop it! <laughs> Uh, they didn't have any of the kale chips left, so I got Cool Ranch Doritos instead. Uh, close enough. I let Chloe drive on the way home. Oh, honey, your first learner's permit sim simulation. How'd it go? It sucked. I wouldn't let her drive over 30. Oh. You'll fit right into this neighborhood then. Chloe, dear, can you close the door, please? I need lessons from a professional. Dad is too uptight. I'll do it. Uh Absolutely not. Yes. No, there is no way your Uncle Max is supervising you in an adult capacity. Jimmy, tell him. Um, okay, okay. Here's one thing that disappears after you pop it, okay? The fiber content. It goes from 16% to 3% of the recommended daily allowance. Jesus Christ. Okay, everyone, get yourself some drinks and come on over. So what are we playing? Uh, is it Clue? We never get to play Clue. It's not Clue. I don't understand why everyone hates Clue. All right, Clue. I do. You hate everything. You're 15. Go out of rotation. I'm just saying. Okay, everyone take a token. Okay, I'll be black. Andrea, these are all black. Exactly. Uh, how are we supposed to remember who's who? That's part of the game. It's all about paying attention and really listening to one another. That sounds awful. <laughs> uh, what the hell is this? Is that, is that glitter all over the board? Okay, everyone, put one of these on. You can't be serious. It's festive. She is serious. Oh, come on, everyone. It's Andrea's turn this month. Humor her. See, that's been the secret to our happy marriage. That and so much Zoloft. There better not be any photographic records of this evening. Okay, now place your tokens on start. This doesn't even look like a real board game. But where did you, where'd you get this thing? I ordered it online. Where? Etsy? This looks like a third grade craft project. For Christ's sake, I already got glitter all over my hands. <sighs> Dad, Dad, is there glitter on my face? Yep. Well, you just, ugh. Hey, Andrea, you're yelling. I, I'm not yelling. Stuff it spreads like a plague. The cat will be licking off the floor and shitting it out for weeks. Honey, yeah. did you let the cat back in? I didn't know he was out. All right, all right. <sighs> Everyone, we're going to be playing an unusual kind of game tonight. It's a little different than you're used to, and it might be out of your comfort zone. So please keep an open mind. Is there nudity involved in this? Can we be serious for a moment? Thank you. Tonight's game is called, We're All Gonna Die, Eventually. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> is your family passive aggressive and repressed? Do you find it hard to talk about things like love and death and difficult end of life decisions? Don't wait till it's too late. Start the conversation now with this fun and interactive board game. Everyone wins when your loved ones open up the lines of communication. Recommended for ages 13 through death. Look, and it comes with hand puppets. Oh, this one is called Grimy. Hello, Chloe. I'm Grimy. <laughs> I'm in hell. Andrea, sweetie, how much Zoloft did you take this morning? Look, I'm totally serious about this. <sighs> really, 
I am. I think this would be a, a healthy thing for our family. We never talk about this stuff. I'm not playing this stupid game. I'll play. This, this is really messed up, Andrea, even for you. What are you afraid of, Max? I'm not afraid. This is just stupid, that's all. You're blushing. Face gets all red when you lie. Shut up, Andrea. I'll play. Mom. What's the matter? Aw. Mom, come What's on. Max alone. What's the matter, Max? Is you scared, Maxie? Is you scared of little Grimey? I'll play! <laughs> Andrea. It's all because of me, isn't it? Oh, Dad, no. No, of course not. Well, maybe a little. Okay, it's the game. We'll play, all right? Right? Good. Honey, can you pass me the onion dip? I bought some nice hummus and carrots instead. Yeah, I, I'd really like some uh, hummus. Ooh, that looks good. I'll, I'll have some, too. All right, don't patronize me, Jimmy. What? It, it really looks quite edible. Okay, is everyone on start? Do we roll to see who goes first? Uh, according to the rules, whoever is closest to death goes first, and then it goes counter counterclockwise. Wow, you guys, harsh. <clears throat> now you have to pick a card now. I can read, Andrea. I can't read this. For the next round, take turns sharing your visions about what your ideal funeral would be like. How would you like family and friends to say goodbye to you? Not ready? Lose a turn and go back one space. I, okay, I don't understand how you win this game. Do what, we vote on who has the best answer? No, no, there's, there's no best answer. It's just a tool to approach a difficult subject in a lighthearted way. So you mean there's no object to the entire game? Do you know what dad wants for his funeral? Andrea, I'm not even sure. I know what I want for my funeral. Exactly. And now we all have the chance to talk about it before, you know. What's the point in playing if you can't win? Just make an attempt, okay? For once in your life, just go with the flow. Listen, can somebody else go first? I really want to think about this just for a few minutes. Oh, well, mom is next in the chronological deadline, so. Thanks, sweetie. No offense. Fine, Ben. Here's what I want. I want a second line parade, like in New Orleans. Wait, what, what you mean like with jazz? And in culturally appropriated African-American culture? Mom, we're, we're a bunch of wasps in Vermont. Well, I want it to be joyous. Just parade me through the town square with a high school band, all dressed up in colorful outfits and sashaying down the street with music and umbrellas. No tears. Oh, Mom. I never knew this about you. I kind of love that. Chloe, you can lead the jazz procession with your saxophone. <laughs> Grandma, the only thing I've learned to play in mar marching band is Louie Louie. Oh, and Crazy Train. Perfect. And Jimmy, you can wear your green and purple tux. Wait, you mean my, my Joker costume from last Halloween? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, it would be nice to get more than one use out of it. Sure. You know, I'm probably going to have to get a parade permit. You know, I could talk to Joe down at Town Hall. You have to get a bunch of porta potties, too. Well, we could route it from the house down to Linden Street, finish up at the Glendale Cemetery. Well, that means we'd have to reroute traffic uh, to off Route 10. I'll just close off Elm down by St. Michael's. I parked in front of the convent there once when I was in a hurry. Man, those nuns were pissed. Hello, Mrs. Morton. How are you today? Thank you. I am, I am good with the today and green and the wind of it. Can you tell me your full address? The roof sometimes falls with shingles and the driveway bits. Sometimes we have to move if the road will let us. <laughs> Would you believe? <laughs> Thank you. Do you know why you are here in the hospital? The hallway baby in white with its new ideas for usage and fuzzy hat too 
Mrs. Morton, can you describe to me what is happening in this picture? It's a uh, species with, with the dusty zone areas. They try to reach and grow it back sometimes. She is tr trying, reaching hard. Thank you, Mrs. Morton. She is trying, reaching hard. You've been very helpful, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope the world lasts for you. I need to do some more testing, but the preliminary bedside record seems to indicate that your mother has something called Wernicke's aphasia. It's a very common post-stroke condition where the patient is able to converse fluently, but with impaired meaning and poor comprehension. So is she able to understand what you're saying or is she just going along with it and trying to make conversation? It's hard to tell. She may just be picking up on my verbal intonations and physical gestures. She knows what she's trying to say and it makes sense to her, even if it doesn't to us. Can she get better? Speech language therapy sometimes helps patients improve. The trick can often be trying to get them to buy into it because they think that there's nothing wrong and everyone else is at fault for not understanding them. I'm sorry. Uh, she's a physics professor. And she's always been the sharpest one out of, out of all of us. This, this is very hard. I understand. This must be very difficult for you and your family. Well, it's just the two of us now. What, what, did, you, what did you say your name was? I'm Dr. Freem, uh, I'm Corey. And I hope the world lasts for you. So anyway, she chased my car all the way down the street and tried to snap a picture of my license plate with her cell phone. Did she get it? No, no, I got away. But uh, I mean, look, she was fast, but she was no flying nun. You must be so proud. Hey, look, I'm Jewish. There was no skin off my nose. So who's going next? Dad, are you ready now? I think I am. Yes. So, OK, here's what I want, everybody. Just a memorial service. No church, no hearse, no memorial, cremation. Oh, I hope you're not just saying that to save money. No. I really thought about this. I don't want to be pumped full of chemicals and buried in a box. Okay, just take my ashes, scatter them up at the lake cabin. Dad, I didn't know that you were such an environmentalist. Cremation really isn't as eco-friendly as you might think, Grandpa. Burning one body generates enough greenhouse gas to equal burning about 30 pounds of coal. What? I read it on the order of good death. There's a section called Ask a Mortician. It's a website, you know, on the internet. That thing with Google. What are you doing on death websites? Yeah, why can't you just be surfing for porn like a normal teenager? Max! Here, I have a bookmark. Chloe, um, <clears throat> should I be concerned? Mom, give me a break. I liked it better when you were interested in horses. Grandma, that was in like fifth grade. Yeah, and prohibitively expensive, I can tell you. Listen, Grandpa, to fully incarcerate, a human body to bone and ash fragments, the retort must be heated to between 1400 and 1800 degrees Fahrenheit and maintained at this level for between 45 and 90 minutes. So you're throwing out all of that greenhouse gas into the environment and you're also vaporizing all of the chemicals in your body, like the mercury in your dental fillings. And even the ashes that you finally wind up with aren't as pretty and smooth like you see them on TV. They have chunks of bone and gristle in them. Sometimes they even get mixed up with other people's ashes at the bottom of the grate. Wow, Jesus. Now I'm depressed. At least it's better than embalming and casket burial. That dumps over 800,000 gallons of formaldehyde into the soil every single year. 
not to mention hundreds of thousands of tons of steel, concrete, and wood that could be used for building shelters or homes. Wow. Who wants a beer? Nice try. This is good, guys. We're learning things here. Yeah, yeah. So far, we're parading mom's corpse through downtown and dumping dad's chunky, funky, mercury-infused ashes overboard. And what about you? I don't care. Really? So you don't have any opinion about, uh, at all, about what we do with you? We can just have you tax, tax, taxidermied and, and use you as a scarecrow in mom's vegetable garden? Maybe just toss you in the compost pile? Now that, that would be an eco-friendly burial. Yeah, but I'd worry about attracting bears though. We already had to take down the bird feeders this spring. I'll be dead. What do I care? I don't believe you. I think you're scared to think about it. I'm not scared of death. I'm scared of more immediate things like sharks or brown recluse spiders or Republicans. Are you taking a turn or not? Fine. That's not my token. Mine's the black one. Well, the wrong. I know. I haven't even left start yet. How can you move me backwards? Honey, that was my token. You, oh. Uh, Mom. Oh, for Christ's sakes. This is so much better than Clue. Chloe, your Uncle Max lost his turn, so now you go. I'm, I don't think you're gonna like it. What do you mean? You want to be mummified, don't you? Like where they insert a hook in your nose and pull your brain out through your nostrils? Is that really how they did it? How, how, how would it fit through? They diced the brain up by jabbing a probe up through the nose and then yanking out bits of tissue. And they tilted the head forward to the left uh, to, uh, to let the rest of the liquefied brains pour out. Chloe, honey, please don't become a mummy. Uh, I, I said, I say, go for it. I mean, you could put poison dart booby traps around your sarcophagus and curse people to eternal damnation and stuff. Are you done, Uncle Max? I'm just saying. I want a green burial. How green, exactly? All the way. No embalming, no casket, no ashes, no concrete vault in a cemetery. No cemetery, no headstone. You mean just dig a hole somewhere and just toss you in. Yep. Like a serial killer victim. There's actually an eco-friendly shroud that you could buy that has handles thrown into it. You can be lowered into the ground that way and eventually the tarp will decompose naturally. Some even have seeds sown into them so you can have flowers and trees grow over your grave. So you could have a tree sprouting from your forehead. Yes. <laughs> and you could sit there in its shade when you come to visit me. That sounds quite lovely. It sounds illegal. Lots of cemeteries are doing it nowadays. There are also nature preserves set aside for it. Huh. It's the most natural thing in the world. Returning to the earth. Letting it surround you and take you back in. Are, are we allowed to go back, change our answers? So... That's it then. No more second or third or fourth opinions. No. No more. We have to tell her. Well, she knows, Andrea. I mean, she, she must know. I knew. It's just, it's not fair. So, there were some good parts towards the end. I could swear in public whenever I felt like it. It's not fucking fair. I was prescribed marijuana for nausea, so I got to smoke that a lot. Well, even more than I did before, I mean. I became a lot closer to my mother and we shared our secrets with each other. It was just that one time in college. Shh, don't tell your father. Even my dad opened up to me in a way that he never had. Just that one time in college. Don't tell mom. It was almost a relief when the, fi when the final diagnosis came. I could have a few months left without injecting poisons into my body and 
searing radiation scars that made me look like a Chernobyl survivor. Or I could continue treatment to the bitter end and gain a few more months beyond that. She told us to stop. So we stopped. From then on, I was able to look at it differently. I knew that it was still there inside me, growing exponentially, but it was organic, natural, like mold aging a fine wine or delicate cheese. I wasn't flooding my system with toxic chemicals. Methotrexate. Cyclophosphamide. Doxorubicin. <clears throat> I began to feel better again. I could eat and sleep. I didn't spend my days hooked up to tubes or vomiting or shitting blood. I found myself again and I was still there. Mom got another professor to take over her classes for her for the rest of the semester. Dad took a family medical leave from the bank. He quickly had to fill out the paperwork estimating the length of absence. We started going through my bucket list one by one. Number three, go to a gay nightclub with Uncle Max? Really? This is awesome. There are like three other ball jinks here. Yeah, you should see it on Dykes on Bikes Night. Number six, lose my ver- <clears throat> Um, I'm sorry. What? Done. Let's just move on. <sighs> Number seven, <clears throat> at an octopus. That was the last one on my list. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist when I grew up. I just didn't know that I wouldn't get to finish growing up. Since third grade, I had desperately wanted a pet octopus. No. They're incredibly smart and agile and even capable of showing affection. They can differentiate between individual humans and like to solve puzzles like unscrewing jars or untying knots to get at food. Yeah, they're also delicious with garlic. Just... I could never, ever eat one of them. How could you kill a creature that decorates its lair with pretty rocks or demonstrates its own unique personality? Most of them only get to live two or three years at most. They don't even have a childhood. They're immediately on their own once they hatch. There isn't an octopus mom or dad to teach them. They have to learn everything on their own. They follow their brain and their three hearts. I wanted so badly to see one in person. Not in prison in a plastic tank in some sad aquarium. In the wild, on its own terms. I think we can do that. It was February in New England, so the Atlantic was pretty much out. We'd have to travel far. What about Hawaii? Because, you know, we, we, we wouldn't need passports. He knew we didn't have enough time to apply for one. For his sake, I pretended I didn't know he was thinking that. We settled on Oi, Oi, Hu, Oi Hu. The Shriners Hospital in Honolulu was nearby, so that was some comfort. I worried about her on the flight, though. It was 12 and a half hours. I didn't care. That was only the equivalent of sitting through three chemo treatments, and I slept most of the way anyway. Mornings were best for her. Each day before it got too hot out, We'd snorkel out to the reef and look for signs of octopi. Octopuses. And it was gorgeous. Oh, a rainbow of water and coral and fish. She was so happy. On the third day, I saw it. She wasn't very big, maybe three feet across. Both of us froze as we made eye contact. Then she retreated back into the coral as far as she could go until I could only see one of her eyes and part of a tentacle. She peered out at me, not particularly afraid, just curious. I reached out my hand very, very slowly. I held my hands inches away, not touching. I kept it there for maybe 30 seconds or so, and then carefully, finally, 
It extended its tentacle towards me and brushed the back of my knuckle with the very tip of its arm. Then it was gone. For the rest of the morning, we were ecstatic. We lay out on the shore and stared up at the brilliant blue sky, let the breeze come over us. We were so thankful. We went back in for a quick swim before heading heading back for lunch. Chloe was just radiant with happiness. She <laughs> glowed. At one point I looked up and noticed that Chloe had gone out in the water again. And she was pretty far out. Chloe, that look that's far enough. She turned her head around and and just floated there for a moment, staring way back at us on the shore. And that's when I knew. It's the most natural thing in the world, returning to the earth, letting it surround you and take you back in. Chloe! We let her go. We let her go. We stood there on the shore, our eyes straining as her green swim cap receded further and further off into the distance. And soon it was just a, a green speck on the horizon. And then it was gone. There's an optical phenomenon that happens sometimes during the sunset. And if the conditions are just right, there's a green flash is visible just above the upper rim of the disk of the sun. And sometimes it looks like a green ray shooting up into the sky. That's her. That's my Chloe. Honey? Your water shoes out on the jack. They're gonna get soaked. Yeah, that them there a couple of days ago to dry out. I know, and then it always rains before you remember to bring them in again. You're forever in a cycle of wet boating shoes. What difference does it make? They're water shoes. They're supposed to get wet. They reek. Sometimes I can smell them before I see you coming. I closed all the call windows. Oh, thanks, honey. What did I miss? Uh, your mother wants us to dissolve her body in a vat of acid and bury it in this closed location. Cool. You're really not going to go get them? Too late. It's already raining now. I'm just going to burn them next time you're not looking. Fair warning. Okay. Break time over. My turn. So you changed your mind about the whole vat of acid thing? Mom? Dad? You wouldn't. I'm the old man. You guys, come on. Okay, so, I want my body donated to science. Well, that's, uh... Shut up, Max. I didn't even... You didn't even have to. You mean like an organ donor, honey? Well, it's actually different than that. You know that little heart symbol that they put on your license when you're an organ donor? You do know what I'm talking about, right? Are you freaking kidding me? Not one of you is an organ donor? Don't look at me. I haven't even taken my driver's test yet. I'm surprised at you. What? I, I guess I just, I don't know. I never thought about it before. They ask you right when you're getting your license. Well, I renew online. The last time I was even in the DMV was like 20 years ago. Oh, anyway, this isn't an organ, organ donor situation where your tissues and organs are harvested for transplant after you die. You're donating your entire body for medical research. You want to be a, a, a cadaver? Well, not right now. Honey, why have you never said anything about this before? It's probably harder to talk about it without the glitter and the hand puppets. True. Look, I brought brochures. How come I don't get one? Well, it, it sounds like this would clash with your green burial wishes. There's some preservation involved. Oh, bummer. Unless you wanted to donate yourself to a body farm. That's where forensic criminal, criminologists leave cadavers exposed to the elements to study the efforts, the effects of nature on decomposition. 
I really didn't think it was possible for this evening to get any weirder than it already was. The Anatomical Gift Program is an opportunity for you to make a priceless and meaningful contribution to medical science and healthcare education. Our donors are treated with the utmost respect by medical students who are often on a first name basis with the donors that have chosen to gift their bodies to the next generation of medical professionals. You may also choose to remain anonymous when registering for the program. Mm. Looks like they can keep you on ice for up to two years. Gee, I wonder if they allow family visits. That doesn't seem like a very good idea. Oh, right. Yeah. Memorial services of Thanksgiving are held at the end of research to instill a sense of gratitude in our students, as well as an opportunity for them to say farewell along with the donor's family members. There's something very sweet about that, Andrea. Is that a kidney? I've already started filling out some of the paperwork online, just so you all know. The website is on the back page if you're interested. Anyone over 18 can donate. Not everyone, Mom. It says you can't donate if you died by suicide, homicide, motor vehicle accident, deep open wounds, or drowning. Yeah, they got more restrictions here than a country club. You also can't have died of anything infectious like uh, hepatitis, tuberculosis, uh, West Nile virus, or HIV AIDS. So I could still be cremated at the end of the program, because it looks like a nice place to wait until then. Dad, you'll be in the drawer. Oh, Mom, <laughs> this website is seriously messed up. Ah, oh, oh, we... no, sweetie, you typed it in wrong. It's www.anatomicalgift.com, not anatomicalgraft.com. I hate autocomplete. Anyway. I'd like all you to read these through, through these uh, sometime and, and think about it. Maybe because one of us, someone will discover a cure for cancer or heart disease or Parkinson's. How about a cure for boredom? Because I think I'll have to die up for it, of it. Fuck off, Max. Let's just keep playing. Dad, um, you didn't take your bonus roll yet. Which one am I again? The black one. Good. This one, this one. All oh, right, right. Back in Limbo Lane. One, two, three, four, five. Who's this guy with the briefcase and the halo? That's Living Will. He's a lawyer. Oh, God, you have got to be kidding me. Pick a card. All right. Living Will wants to know, who will speak for you if you're unable? Who do you trust to carry out your wishes regarding life support and end of life decisions. Choose one player and advance their token to the proxy box. Well, that's easy. Um, honey. Oh, well, oh, you know, I just, I just assumed. No, no, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just not sure that if push came to shove, <laughs> I could do it. Do what? You know, it. Pull the plug. Well. I'm just being honest. No, 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 I understand. Would you be able to do that for, for me? Carly, I'd rip it right out of the wall. <laughs> I love you. Love you too, sweetie. I think that you're both being a little flippant about this. What does it even mean, pull the plug? No extraordinary measures. Like what, for instance? Give specifics. No machines to breathe for me. No tubes to feed me. If I'm brain dead, let me go. What if you're in a coma? What if recovery is possible? Okay. All right. We're really laying it all out here, huh? You really want to know what I've been thinking lately? Go for it, Grandpa. My last stint in the hospital gave me the time to reflect about uh, our choices. Go ahead. Back when your grandmother lay dying in the hospital, I was the one who had to have the conversation with her. I sat there holding her hand, explained to her what it meant to have a DNR order issued. 
about what it meant for someone as old and frail as her to have CPR administered, uh, probably waking up on a ventilator with broken ribs, maybe even suffering brain damage or how it might not even work and how she could die in a violent and undignified way for no good reason. And do you know what she asked me? She wanted to know if it was a sin to go like that, to not do everything that she could, st so that she could stay alive for as long as she could. Fucking religion poisons everything. Keep your gay, atheist, liberal, democratic bigotry to yourself, asshole. Whoa, 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 wait. wait. Yeah. Shut up, Max. Dad. No. Dad. No ventilators, no feeding tubes, no CPR. <laughs> I'll email Wrigley and Dunham on Monday. Have them draw up the papers. My pleasure. Well, you know what I mean. I hope that you would do the same for me. I'll do it. Pick me. Pick me. Screw you, Max. You're not even allowed in the proxy box yet anyway. You're all the way back at death's door because you can't even bring yourself to answer a single question. You're being beaten by a 16-year-old girl. Look, Morticia, I'm glad that you and your mother are both enjoying yourselves. How about you, Jimmy? Is this your idea of a fun Saturday night? Um, I... It's ridiculous. What's the point? I'm talking about all this now. You are so selfish. I'm selfish. Who's the one who hijacked family game night to indulge in this morbid treacle? Why do you always have to be such a dick about everything? This stuff matters. It's important. I don't see we. I, I don't see what we need some some pedantic boy to talk about this. I'm I'm just waiting for you to, to break out the hand puppets again, Andrea. When when in this family would we ever talk about this stuff otherwise? Huh? Do you know how I learned about menstruation? Mom sent away for a dear Abby pamphlet called "What Every Girl Needs to Know" and left it on my bed along with a box of Kotex. Well, I got what every boy needs to know, and believe me, it left out a lot. You both passed the quizzes I gave you afterwards, so clearly you learned something. Grandma, you tested them? Oh, for Pete's sake, it was multiple choice. It's not like there was a written essay component. Oh my God. Oh, hush. It was pre-internet. Listen, Max, your sister's right. You should talk about these things before we have to deal with them. Not gonna live forever, you know. Well, I didn't say that you were. Your mother's not gonna live forever either. I get it. For that matter, you're not going to live forever. Shut up! Um, what just happened? Um, it's, it's pouring out there. He'll get soaked. Let him go, honey. Yeah, better yet, lock the door. Mom, he's upset. Mom, really? The two are ridiculous. You both instantly regress to eight-year-olds whenever you're in the same room together. Yeah, well now we're not in the same room together. You, come on, you're being a little over the top here. I, I'm over the top? Who's the drama queen chucking fiesta wear around the kitchen? All I wanted to do was have a family discussion and, and all he's done all night is mock and snark and avoid any attempt to engage in, in anything of substance. But look, I'll, I'll go talk to him. Can I? No. Andrea. No! Did she just lock herself in her room? Three, two. What the fuck did you do to my room? Oh yeah. It's beige! I was going to tell you later when we had ice cream. Where's all my stuff? Look, you're not a teenager anymore. You haven't used that room for 20 years. You painted over my unicorn mural? That took me weeks. Take a picture of it first. And what about my bedspread with the little pineapples on it and the 42 Beanie Babies, my sticker books? Goodwill, eBay, the dump. Oh my God, my wedding dress? Down cellar, bubble wrap. 
You erased my childhood just so you could have some hideous blank of blank room for your stupid sewing machine? It's a 3D printer. Honey, I told you we should have said something earlier. I didn't see you volunteering. Ugh, I was scared. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You have a 3D printer? It is so stupid. I'm going to open the front door. Can you call the cat in? He's probably hiding under the heliotrope. No, what? Never mind. I'll go with you. Oh, mm. no. You were oh. right. That oh. home was absolutely disgusting. I, I know! Oh, oh, oh God! You probably go up and see how Andy is doing. It's probably not a good idea right now. You know how she gets when she's worked up about something? Oh. I know very well. <clears throat> Sometimes it's uh, just best to leave her alone. Well, you know what? You're probably right. I'll just, I'll just leave her. And I left her. <clears throat> it was a long, slow process. So gradual that at first I didn't even know that it was happening. I held on to her hand as we took off from Hawaii without our daughter. Andrea had the window seat. She was staring straight ahead. You know, I, I wanted to look down at the water as we left to take a last look at our, our daughter's final resting place on the ocean floor. My eyes were full of tears, but I, I craned my neck around her anyway to try to catch a last glimpse before we were swallowed by the clouds. And then I felt it. Andrea let go of my hand. We, uh, we, we sat side by side for 14 hours and we didn't say a goddamn word, which was, you know, actually good practice for the last few months of our marriage, I guess, because, you know, grief counseling didn't work and marriage counseling didn't work. Selling the house with all the memories inside of it, that, that didn't work either. We talked about having another baby, and we talked about getting a dog. Pretty soon, we, we, we weren't talking about anything at all. We just, we just couldn't get past it. We couldn't move on, at least not with each other. So one day, in the, it was in the fall, I, uh, I, just, I left for work. I didn't come back. I went to the bank, I withdrew half our savings, and I left town in the old green VW that Chloe bought off Craigslist when she finally learned how to drive. That was the last time I ever spoke to Andrea directly, except once. Four years to the day after we lost Chloe, I went back to that same beach in Hawaii. I thought that it would, you know, that it would be healing, that it would bring me closure. It didn't. I, um, I, I needed Andrea for that. So I swallowed my heart and I swallowed my pride and I called her. Phone rings. Hello? Hello? Oh, honey, I know. I know. Chloe? Chloe, well, what do you, well, why didn't you just ring the bell? Yeah. I'll get it. They, they got locked out. I'll get it. I thought that thing was locked. <sighs> Dad, I've had the same house key since like first grade. Where, where is everyone? I have some news. Your sister went to her room. Without dessert? Jimmy went to let your mother and Chloe in because they got locked out looking for you and the cat. Uh, I think I found him. Oh, good. You may change your mind about that. How did he get in here? First grade key. Uh, listen, Mom, um, uh, you, re you remember the, the cat? What? 
Wait, that didn't come out right. Max, what are you saying? What is he saying? Um, Mom, I, I found Lester in the driveway under the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes to hide there sometimes. No, I mean under the car. Under the car. I think there was some sort of accident. Is he stuck? Did we get a broomstick or something? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, maybe a shovel? Oh my god! Honey, what? What? I just pulled forward a few feet when I rolled up the windows to get the car closer to the house so he wouldn't have to run in the rain when we left. Yeah. I felt a bump, but I thought it was because I had the car in the wrong gear or something. Oh, sweetie. I killed Lester. He's dead because of me. God, we're running out of bedrooms up there. Max, how bad is it? Bad, Mom. Sorry. He had feline leukemia, you know. The vet said he wouldn't make it another year. I was already looking to, looking into, uh, you know, more humane options. What? You never told me that. I was going to after I figured things out. Well, I could have helped you. Frank, you actively dislike the cat. All right, well, yeah, I got to admit, I mean, he's kind of a jerk as far as cats go. What? I'm going to go get him. Mom. No, I don't think you want to. I'm not leaving him out in the rain like this. It's disrespectful. Frank, put on your coat and get the shovel out of the garage. Oh, can we please just wait until we... No, Frank. Oh. There's a pile of old boxes down cellar. Can you bring me one? Sir, uh, how, how big? I'd say he's about a size eight. Max? Where is everyone and why... Why is Chloe locked in the bedroom crying? Because your room was already occupied. Plus she ran over the cat. <gasps> Mom and Dad are out there now. They're extracting her, him from the driveway. Oh no. Oh no. I know. That poor little thing. We never even got to ask him if he preferred cremation or burial. You know what? Shut the fuck up. Too soon? I have had it with your snark and your deflections and your complete inability to face up to reality. Well, whose reality are we talking about here? You're a coward, Max. Plain and simple. Where do we keep the spatula? Really? Really? You're afraid. You're afraid. Of, of what exactly? of dying. You won't play because you're afraid that it'll, it'll somehow confirm your death to talk about it openly. And it'll make it more real instead of some abstract concept like hedge funds or global warming. I'm not afraid of dying. Bullshit. Everyone's afraid of dying. Look, when I'm gone, I'm gone. I don't see why I should spend the time I have obsessing over it. Because it doesn't always happen like that, Max. Sometimes it drags out for days or months or years. Do you really want us to agonize over medical decisions because you never told us what you really wanted? Haul your ashes around until we have some cathartic inspiration about where to scatter them, like in some fucking Lifetime movie? I... You don't get it, Max. You're never going to. What, Andrea, what? Well, I'm never gonna, to what? It's get different, what? it's different. It's different when you're a parent when you're married. Uh -oh. Max, I... I... I couldn't possibly understand what it's like to fall in love with someone and marry them. I would, I would never, never give up my single gay disposable income to have a child. Don't make this a gay thing. It's not a gay thing. It's a Max thing. I'll just be content with going to the gym and watching RuPaul's Drag Race when I'm not having meaningless hookups on Grindr. I don't even know what that is. <gasps> oh, 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 God. Uh, Dad? Uh, Daddy, Daddy! Uh, oh, okay. What? Shit, 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 shit. Uh, get, get, go, get, get, get out of, can you hear me? Get out of, get out of the way, call, call 911. Wait. Uh, 
What, what, what are you doing? Help me count the compressions. Uh, wait. We're losing time. Help me. This isn't what he wants. Stop it. Max. God damn it, Andrew. He said no. He's not ready. We're not ready. This is your decision. Get out of the fucking way. Ow. God damn it. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we got most of them off the... <gasps> Yes, dear. What, what is it, honey? Oh, are I'm you shitting me? Are I'm you? I'm sorry, Andrea. I had oh. to see if you could really do it. What happened? Uh, your grandfather isn't really dead, so your mother wants to kill him? This is the absolute worst thing you've ever done. I will never forgive you for this. Honey, please, I had to know. It's not your fault you couldn't go through with it. You're just, you're not ready for the proxy box. That's all. You, however. Please, God, no. No, I am appointing you, Max. Max, I need somebody who can be emotionally ruthless. Thanks, I guess. Does that mean I win? All right. Folks, it was sort of a, a dick move on my part. But how often do you get the opportunity to, for a dress rehearsal to go something like that? The smartest thing that I ever did, well, besides marrying Laura, I got the better end of the deal, I think. He lies down on the kitchen table, closes his eyes. The beeping monitor is audible. You see an active monitor screen that reads, Morton Frame. None of Dad's responses will be heard. In the following scene. Do you think he can hear us? I can hear you. I don't think so, Mom. You see, sometimes people can hear you. I can. Dad, blink your eyes three times if you can hear us. Why three? That seems unnecessarily complicated. Fine. Blink once if you can hear us, Dad. I mean, wouldn't we know after the first blink anyway? Dad, blink once and punch Max if you can hear us. <laughs> Frank, honey, it's time. I know. I'm ready. We've been here all night, Frank. Andrea, Max, and me. Hi, Dad. We all flew down as soon as company called. They were very nice. They even paid for the, for the flight. What? That cheap bastard Bobby sprang for airfare? Jeez, now I know I'm really gonna die. I'm sorry about all this. They didn't know, Frank. You weren't back home when it happened. Well, oh, great. I'm gonna die in Paramus, New Jersey. We told the doctors what your wishes are. Max brought the papers. We're gonna let you go, Frank. We're gonna do it just the way you want it. No machines to breathe for me. No tubes to feed me. If I'm brain dead, let me go. Frank, if you can hear me, I want you to know that I love you. I love you and it's okay. For you to let go. Let go. We'll bring you back home, Dad. To the lake, like you wanted. Good girl. Dad. No, no, I, I know, Max. Love you, too. Doctor. The beeping begins to fade, and the heart monitor screen begins to dissolve as Dad stands alone. The beeping is overtaken by the sound of a surf. He sees Chloe and grins, crosses to her slowly, uncertain of his footing, reaches for her hand, and there's a burst of green light and then darkness. Everyone resumes their places around the tables, lights, candles, 
dimmed light slowly. The cat's shoe box now lies in the center of the table. Everyone sits around it. Okay. Um, who would like to say a few words? Maybe we should get out the Ouija board. Uncle Max. Sorry. Honey, are you baking something? The candles, they're pumpkin spice. Oh, yeah. It's in the attic. I know right where it is. Max. Max. Sorry. They do really smell good. Okay, I'll start. I didn't really know Lester that well, but I felt like we had a connection. Like, every time I came over, we had this thing where he would wait until I was sitting on the couch, and then he'd walk along the top of it until he got over to me and sit down and start playing with my hair. Chloe, he was trying to eat it. He did that to me, too. And it kind of hurt. Grandma, why don't you share a special memory of Lester with us? Okay. Um, well, I do remember the first day that, that I brought him home. It was about three years ago this month, actually. It's hard to believe we've had him this long. Yeah. And I was sitting outside by the fountain during my lunch break when all of a sudden I heard this scream. And I turned around to see this little girl flailing on the edge of the fountain and screaming, it's in my hair, it's in my hair. So there was this little ball of white fur and huge terrified eyes perched on her shoulder and clinging <laughs> for dear life. <laughs> a second later, there was this huge splash and they both fell into the pool. There were koi scattered everywhere. One of them actually jumped into my handbag. The blue one that I like? No, the brown one with the quilted pattern. There was no one else around. So I waded into the pool and pulled the girl out. She was soaking wet and screaming and Lester was still clinging to her and yowling. Then the policeman ran over. You are shitting me. I shit you not. He actually thought that I was trying to drown that poor girl in the fountain. Hey, this whole story has gone in a just completely different direction than where I thought it was going. So after we pulled the cat off and sorted all that out, the officer went off with the girl to find her mother and left me with the cat. He looked so pathetic, staring up at me, soaking wet and shivering. What was I supposed to do? I couldn't leave him there. So I took the fish out of my handbag and tossed it back into the pool. And then I put Lester in the handbag since it was already soaking anyway. So I drove him down to the animal shelter to have him checked out. He was fine, but he had clearly been on his own for quite some time and was starving. Plus he had a ton of worms. So they dried him off and fed him and kept him that night. Six shots and three courses of antibiotics later, I brought him home and that's how he got here. In a box on my kitchen table. Oh my God, it's Javier. Sorry, I have to take this. Hey. She seems to have bounced back quickly. Javier is a sensitive musician and captain of the Lacroix team. A dead cat can't really compete. All right, well, what do we do now? Look at me. It wasn't my idea. <clears throat> I think we should at least get him off the table. There <clears throat> seems to be a little leakage. Ugh. Carol. All right, wake's over. Frank, take Lester into the garage. We can store him there oh. until it's dry enough to dig a decent grave tomorrow. Oh, no, why do I have to do it? Because I am still mad at you for your little death-defying stunt. Jimmy, help him out. Use the garage can with the twist lid. Use the garbage can with the twist off lid so the raccoons don't get in there overnight. Fine, fine, fine. You too? Throw that tablecloth in the laundry and reset the table, please. The extra cloths are in the li linen cupboard. I think there's a stain remover under the sink. You make one weird ass Lady Macbeth. This is gross. How are we ever gonna eat off this again? I'm just gonna throw it out. I bought this for mom on Mother's Day, you know? I was 11 years old. It was from the Martha Stewart collection. Mm, another gay signpost we missed. It's a mystery to me how none of us didn't figure it out sooner. Yeah, me too. Do you remember Lenny uh, Happenowitz? 
You had a crush on him, didn't you? Maybe. I remember that you were always trying to get his attention whenever he, he came over to study with me, dragging him off to play Mortal Kombat in the basement every night. Yeah. He was my first real boyfriend. I thought we'd get married one day. He was actually the first guy that I slept with, you know? Yeah, me too. Shut up! You are, you are kidding, right? Well, technically, technically, there, technically, there wasn't any sleeping involved. Oh, please tell me you are kidding. What did you think we were doing down in the rec room? <laughs> oh my god! It was broken the entire time, you know. Your party friends and knocked it over when you were dancing around to Sir Mix a lot this summer. That summer. Oh, that little bastard! Makes you feel any better? We only did it twice. Stop. He wasn't that great. He was a little quick on the draw, as I recall. Oh. <laughs> oh, you'll blind me. <laughs> it's mom organic. It's mom's organic stain remover, you jerk. The worst that could happen is that you'll smell like oregano for the next few days. <laughs> Are you through now? It's sticky out <laughs> here. There are Cheerios everywhere. <laughs> uh, that was totally unwarranted. Oh, that was plenty of warrant. I wonder what happened to little Lenny Hapel Panowitz. The last I heard he was doing drag down in Atlanta. <laughs> that was years ago. <laughs> he could be married now or in jail. Same difference. For all he know, all we know, he could be dead. Max, I want to ask you some- HIV positive, Andrew. Found out two months ago. Oh, Max. It's not going to full. Let's not just do this telenovela here, telenovela here. It's okay. It's just not. It's not a death sentence anymore. Do you know how or who? It doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Are you taking care of yourself? I'm a good doctor and great health insurance. That's more than most people. Why didn't you tell us sooner? I wanted to wait until my viral load went down, which which it did. I'm undetectable now. I'm under the radar. I'm a Paz Ninja. I can't believe you've been living with this for two months and not told any of us. That means you sat through Monopoly last month and Apples to Apples the month before that, and you didn't say a word about it? You say something tonight before you brought out death in a box. It's not how I wanted to frame the news. I'm sorry. I did it for dad. I never thought anyone else. Well, I guess that's the whole point of this game, isn't it? No one is guaranteed anything. No, not everyone makes it to 11 a.m. checkout or even through the night for that matter. Are you going to tell mom and dad? I don't know. I'm only putting more stress on dad these days. It didn't seem to bother him when he was faking his own death half an hour ago. You have to admit that was pretty badass for dad. <laughs> Maybe. I still want to kill him. Well, at least we don't know what to do with his body now. <laughs> so what about you, Max? What do you want? Lights fade to blue as Max steps away from the tab table. During the next scene, Andrea, Mom, Dad, Chloe, and Jimmy find their way back to the table as Max speaks to the audience. At the same time, a family photo begins fading on the wall behind the love seat. When Max is seen as the tableau at the table will match one of the photo. I want to go back. I want to take back every single wasted second that I took all of you for granted and every opportunity that I missed to just stop and look around and see you. I want to protect you from the pain and the grief and the disease and the thousand little indignities that age and death will bring upon us as years pass by. I want to play stupid board games with you every third Saturday night of the month until the world ends.
I lost, you know. Watching the players drop out one by one until you're, you're the only one left standing. It isn't winning. It's the cruelest punishment imaginable, and I can't help wondering if it's my penance for refusing to play the game that night. If that's true, my one consolation is that at least I spared one of them the same fate. Not afraid of HIV. Not even afraid of dying itself. Just afraid of dying alone. All I have left now is their digital ghosts on my cell phone. Sure, I have my friends and my colleagues at work, but that's not the same. As I get older, I realize that everyone, who truly knows me, is gone. And then one day, huh? I'll be gone too. It's the most natural thing in the world. Returning to the earth, letting it surround you and take you back in. Who will speak for you if you're unable? Who do you trust to carry out your wishes regarding life support and end of life decisions? Just couldn't get past it. Couldn't move on. At least not with each other. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes it drags out for days, or months, or years. I appreciate it. And I hope the world lasts for you. And I hope the world lasts for you. White House, the end. It took me by surprise. I thought it was very beautiful. Of course, it has themes that we all hear in our town of make sure that every moment of your life is spent appreciating that you are indeed living and that there is a life going on. Nowadays, things like that are tough to do, but it is a, a sentiment I truly believe. Uh, something that was missing because it's on Zoom is the interaction and the closeness of the people. And you can't help but on Zoom not be together or not overlap or not, uh, if you're gonna argue, make it seem like it's like, like you're intertwined with somebody, especially with the characters of Max and Andrea. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Um, but I think that he wrote a play that you can uh, get a cast together who would truly interact like a family. And when it's on stage, the restrictions that Zoom offers uh, are, will be ripped aside. And that's why theater is so great, because you can tussle with each other in person. I love the actor's friend, and I'm very, very honored and grateful to be asked because sometimes you want to do things and doing something like this is easy. It is a great organization. I, I mean, it is fantastic in how it takes care of uh, the acting community. They are selfless. They just do great, great work. And that's what it means to me. I'm always there to help out. so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to donate to the Actors Fund. The information is below and stay tuned tomorrow. Same time, same place here at the New Works Virtual Festival. Have a great night.